<laughs> Me, Arnold. Huh? And today we look to the future. Hmm, not how I imagined everything. Due to a volcanic eruption, the sky is filled with dense clouds and humanity has found itself without the sun. Interesting. How long can you live like this? A billion people suffer from vitamin D deficiency. If the sun disappears, then after seven days, half the population will suffer from acute depression. And there'll be a 75% increase in the risk of getting cancer. There'll be a 32% increase in cases of stroke. And it'll become twice as easy to get diabetes. Therefore, better stock up not on canned food, but on vitamins. Without the sun, there's no reason to live on the surface anymore. So everyone moves underground and adapts to this new existence. Nutrition is in the hands of science and technology. Scientists create mushroom and hydroponic farms capable of growing a variety of products. And with a 3D printer, you can quickly print out your favorite dishes. Without sunlight, the human brain can't distinguish between day and night. Your hormones go haywire. And there's a sharp rise in obesity. When the hormone leptin, responsible for appetite, is reduced by 80%, the daily portion of food will increase by almost half, 44%. And this will lead to extra weight. Hey, I'm not sure you can go there. Everything looks like in movies about superheroes. A long corridor, a secret laboratory. And here's the solution. All this turns out to be a global experiment. Who's behind all of this? Come on, Arnold, defeating this strange main villain, you can save the planet. Vitamin D helps in the assimilation of calcium, essential for healthy bones. If it's deficient, your bones become weak and fragile. That's why when you're walking, your feet feel like rubber. And under conditions of complete darkness, your chance of getting a fatal fracture is doubled. Arnold, you're a real hero. You've returned all mankind to a normal life. But knowing your propensity for star fever, this could be dangerous. Let's go back. And that's what happens when you hit the snooze button 10 times in a row. You can oversleep the general evacuation of the whole planet. Come on, Arnold. Don't go <laughs> rushing to get your panties all in a twist. People left a bunch of really cool stuff behind. What are you going to do first? Seriously? A really huge burger? But what about cool cars and the opportunity to live in Trump's apartment? Do something cool. Wow, Arnie, you are a true hero. Releasing all the animals from the zoo, it's damn noble. Come on, folks, leave a like for this. But what about pets? There are 500 million cats and just as many dogs on Earth. And once they're free, they become prey to predators. But let's not talk about sad things when the whole dang planet is open for business. Yeah, the coolest roller coaster. The car accelerates to 206 kilometers an hour and drops from a height of 127 meters. Before, Arnold, they didn't let you in here because of your height, but now it's no problem. Hmm, somehow it doesn't look like it's all that fun. Without people, electricity will gradually disappear. Lithium batteries self-discharge after seven years, and you can forget about solar energy after about 20 years when the last panel fails. And nuclear power plants in a few decades will stop forever without human service. Arnold, get out of there. If you get injured, you won't be able to call 911. This time, you're in luck. As you can see, the problem with garbage ain't going nowhere. Plastic and glass will decompose only after 700 to more than 1,000 years. And it will only get worse. Arnold? You survived! I see that the primitive life somehow suits you better than the civilized one. Living in cities is getting dangerous. I advise you to find another place to live. An airplane? Arnold, are you kidding me? I guess those thousands of hours playing Microsoft Flight Simulator really paid off. Arnold, look! There's one more rocket left on Earth! Hurry! Um, Arnold? I don't mean to upset you, but the lion you released from the zoo is on the plane and right behind you! Bon voyage, Arnold. One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. 
Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long. And you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash... Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 2050. Oh, dear. That's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction, and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold. Remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Huh? Arnold, was that sound from you? I told you, because of your stupidity, AI is going to destroy all of humanity. Or maybe not all. A nuclear explosion will destroy about 3,000 square kilometers. In total, there are about 362 million square kilometers suitable for destruction on Earth. To destroy everything, it would take around 128,000 warheads. This is 10 times more than there are in the world. Arnie, are you ready for a nuclear war? 
Good news, part of humanity will survive. The only question is, for how long? Canned food is a great choice. Yeah, that last can was one too many. But what do you think, Arnold? How long will you last without plants? In Svalbard, an international seed vault has been built. It contains more than 900,000 seeds, but can hold up to 2 billion. That's enough to revive all the flora of the Earth. Or at least it'll provide something to eat during long nuclear winter nights. You're pretty well set up, buddy. Chips, water, plants, canned food, medicine, even a computer. <laughs> But it seems that you've forgotten the most important thing. One nuclear explosion on average will release 50 tons of dust into the atmosphere. The dust from the explosion of all nuclear weapons on Earth could cover 50 to 85 percent of the Earth's sky. But modern computer models promise that a nuclear winter will last no more than one month. Things ain't so bad, Arnold. There aren't enough nuclear weapons on the entire Earth to destroy all of civilization. There are many victims, but the nuclear apocalypse has been cancelled. It's not a good morning, Arnold. Do you remember what day it is today? Well, of course, today is Apocalypse Day. A volcano has already erupted. Then next we get a tsunami. And to top it off, we got a big-ass meteor coming. The eruption of a supervolcano is an excellent example of a possible apocalypse that our ancestors already experienced. For example, the eruption of the Toba volcano 50,000 years ago reduced the human population to just 3,500. And it also brought closer the onset of an ice age. You seem so calm, Arnie. As if you already have a solution. Arnold, you're prepared. I'm so proud of you. A hot air balloon. Seriously? Wait, did you make it yourself? Yeah, looks like you did. Are you sure you really need all this stuff? Or did you just take the TV as ballast? Well, let's go. You're not the first to make a balloon with your own hands. Larry Walters attached weather balloons to a chair and launched himself into the sky, almost to five kilometers. The result of his flight was a $1,500 ticket, a record altitude for a flight on a cluster of balloons, and, of course, Darwin Award. Surviving the apocalypse at cloud level is a great option. You can't be touched by a tsunami or an earthquake. But look, there's a meteor. Due to friction, its temperature is now over 1,500 degrees Celsius. Real hot air balloons are made from fireproof fabric. Remind me, Arnold, what did you use? Oh, you think that's it? Behold, the rain of meteor debris! So, uh, Arnie, how long do you think it can keep going? The first non-stop around-the-world balloon trip was completed by Picard and Jones on March 1, 1999. They landed in Egypt after a flight of 41,000 kilometers, lasting almost 20 days. Congratulations, Arnold! You survived the apocalypse. True, all the rest of civilization is destroyed. The only survivors are you, cockroaches, and promoters. They'll certainly survive any apocalypse. Leaders of all the countries have agreed to completely get rid of lithium, oil, and uranium. Now nothing can threaten the environment. But, hmm, how are we supposed to get energy without fossil fuels? Humans use 150 petawatt hours of energy every year. To produce that much, 200 billion solar panels covering an area of 3.7 trillion square feet will be needed. This is 3.7% of the Sahara Desert's area. If the entire desert is covered in panels, we would get 27 times more energy than we need. But this would cost five quadrillion dollars. It's easier to solve this problem using brute force. What's that you have there, Arnie? 
A lithium battery? Now you are it, along with all the other environmental violators, will have to generate energy yourselves. But there is one problem. If the entire population of the Earth keeps pedaling all year round without stopping, we'll only generate 10.5 petawatt hours of energy. That's just 7% of how much we need. To meet our needs, we need 125 trillion people pedaling eight hours every day. Eight hours on the bike and your punishment is over.